Understanding how statistics work is one matter. Actually managing statistics on your SQL Server is an entirely different matter. Now I would be remiss, or just miss, I don't suppose I need to do it twice, if I didn't mention that I have some rules that will help you manage statistics. I'm going to give you 10 rules, not all of them are all that directly related to statistics, but will help in that arena in one form or another. So without further ado, here are my 10 rules for managing statistics. Number one, make sure that auto create stats and auto update stats are both on, unless you have a compelling reason to make sure that they are turned off. When your query hits the columns in a table, you wanna make sure that there are statistics there. Those single column statistics are automatically created. Likewise, when you create a new index, those index statistics are also automatically created if you have these settings turned on. You may be wondering what happens when SQL Server doesn't have any statistics to go on. Good question. Let's take a look at what happens. We can see that the estimates are way off and there's even a warning at the bottom telling us, hey, I don't have any column stats, so don't expect a great guess here. Number two, don't use maintenance plans to do statistics maintenance. The update statistics task in a maintenance plan provides us with kind of a nasty choice to make. Either we update statistics using a full scan or we update them using a number of sampled rows or a percentage of sampled rows. Neither choice is all that appealing. The reason for that is with a full scan, we're reading through every single row in that table in order to build our statistics. To make matters worse, SQL Server will pass through multiple times, multiple scans of the entire table that is, in order to complete all the stats that it needs. It can't take all the columns that it wants to build statistics on, run through the whole table just once and get everything it needs. It just doesn't behave that way. On the flip side, the rows sampling can be a problem because as the table grows, we don't know if our sample size is appropriate anymore. So we may have to go in and keep tabs on that sample size. That's gonna be a lot of overhead to make sure that we're not over or under sampling our data. Number three, don't overthink this. When we run SP Blitz as part of our critical care process, one of the items that gets reported back to us is whether or not there are user-created stats present. User-created stats are helpful. Yes! Filtered stats are helpful. Yes! You're the man now, dog! But you don't want to overthink this. Trying to remedy every performance problem you have through the creation of more and more statistics is not going to be a happy solution long term. Likewise, we don't want you to overthink maintenance either. We don't like seeing maintenance plans with update stats tasks in them because a lot of times what happens is people put in an index rebuild task right before it, which at the end of an index rebuild updates statistics. So you're basically doing the same work twice. And for other reasons that we've covered, we don't really care much for the update statistics task. Instead, what you can do to make life easier is to either create a, a SQL agent job with T-SQL instructions to update statistics, you can run SP update stats yourself, or you can even go simpler than that. Get a third party script like Ola Hallengren's index maintenance solution, or if you're more PowerShell inclined, you could go with one of the Minionware offerings from Jen and Sean McCown. In either case, you're probably going to be better off than trying to manage all this by hand pushing buttons on individual statistics. Number four, avoid problem patterns. There are different design patterns that can get you into trouble when you have statistics in the mix. Here's one pattern I've seen. Let's say that you're a service provider and you're designing your databases around providing services to multiple customers. If you decide to go with the one database per customer approach, then you can get into trouble. The way that that happens is, say you design your tables in that database, that you have customer ID as your leading column in your tables. Well, if this is gonna be your clustered index and there's no difference between any of the rows as far as the clustered index is concerned, this is gonna be a mess as far as statistics goes because there will be no cardinality, everything will be the same. 
So you want to make sure that when you're designing your database that you make sure that whatever is your leading column actually has some cardinality to it. Otherwise, your stats will be pretty useless. Number five, avoid linked servers, especially those prior to 2012. Prior to SQL Server 2012 SP1, in order to get statistics from the remote query side in a linked server involved query, the user had to have pretty outrageous permission levels. They had to be either a sysadmin at the server level, or they had to be a DDL admin or DB owner at the database level. That's a pretty extraordinary amount of permissions just to be able to get good estimates out of a histogram. Fortunately, with SP1, that's been updated so that all the permissions that are necessary are that the user be able to see the columns that they want statistics on and whatever columns are involved in the where clause of the remote query, they need to have permissions to see that column as well. But that's much more lightweight than having to go full-blown admin level to see stats. Point is, if you have a chance, set up whatever link servers you can as being more modern versions of SQL Server. The older ones require a much bigger security hole. Number six, do have stats for read-only databases. Yes, this is possible even though you can't write to the database. With the rollout of SQL Server 2012 and availability groups also came the functionality to make temporary statistics on columns that don't have them in read-only databases. The good news here is that you don't have to be using always on AGs in order to get this functionality. It works for databases that are being log shipped to and for things like read-only snapshots. All you have to do in order to create these stats is to query that read-only database on a column that does not have statistics and SQL Server will automatically create statistics in tempdb for that column. It's a big performance win in that we now get accurate, well, as much as they can be accurate estimates from things like statistics, histogram, and so forth that we would not have gotten otherwise. Number seven, trace flags and database level settings are your friends. Get to know them and use them wisely. Trace flag 4199, for instance, will enable a bunch of optimizer-based enhancements. And it could be that this is a good thing or a bad thing, but at least you have control over that particular switch. And same with other trace flags as well. Also, if you're using SQL Server 2016, they've introduced new database level settings. So you can tell SQL Server, I want to use the legacy cardinality estimator. I want to turn on parameter sniffing or turn it off and different settings that will help you get better estimates. Number eight, do not trust the database tuning advisor. Not only will it give you some really sketchy recommendations about what indexes to create, and of course the stats that follow them, but it'll also leave junk stats lying around, even if you don't create the index it recommends. The database tuning advisor is really eager to be helpful, too eager probably. If you run the DTA and it returns a bunch of missing index recommendations and then you implement those missing index recommendations, you may find that the next time you run the DTA, it's got even more suggestions for you. It really wants you to be happy. Trouble is, there's a point at which you have to tell DTA, all right, you know what? I got this from here. I think you've done enough. And you can't trust the DTA's recommendations. Otherwise, you're going to end up creating indexes that really don't matter much and are just going to make everything related to index maintenance operations slower. A better alternative is just to run tools that tell you what missing indexes are really important, or to focus in on problem queries and look at the execution plans, see what the missing indexes are for there, start with your worst performing queries and work your way down, rather than just trusting everything the DTA claims to be important. Number nine, Make sure you clean house. Don't leave any statistics lying around that you don't need to maintain. It's easy to get caught up trying this filtered stat or this user created statistic and then forget that it's there. But as part of your update stats routine, it's still being kept up to date. Sure, statistics are lightweight objects. They're not meant to be massive behemoths like tables or even indexes can be at times. They're meant to be small little samplings 
summaries of what you can find in a table, not necessarily the table data itself. But the problem there is that even lightweight objects can start to pile up. And although they may not take up a ton of storage space, they do take time and effort to go through and maintain. So it is in your best interest, maybe not from a storage perspective, but from a performance perspective, to go through and make sure that if you've created stats of your own that you really don't need, keep pruning them back until you only have the stats that you really want. And finally, our last rule is number 10, get with the new cardinality estimator if you can, and especially if you're seeing signs of the ascending key problem. We've seen in previous videos the differences in how the old and new cardinality estimator behave. And for the most part, we recommend that you be on the new cardinality estimator by default. If for some reason the new CE isn't working out for you, you can always flip the trace flag to send it back to the old one and see if things get better. But as a general rule, we find that the new cardinality estimator does a little bit better job. If you have the ascending key problem where you have, say, a data warehouse or an ETL process that brings in millions of records every month, things like that, then you definitely want to try out at least the new cardinality estimator first. If it doesn't work, you can always go back. And there you have it, my 10 rules for managing statistics on SQL Server. They're not exactly catchy, they don't rhyme, but they will help you keep out of trouble when it comes to making sure that your stats are up to date and happy.